Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Crit House. I'm Jeff Larson, and today we're going to Jersey, and we are going to talk about the work of uh, Tom Minty, who is here with us. Um, but before we get underway with that, I am going to introduce you to our two reviewers today. Edward Bochas is a documentary and a street photographer. He has been a college professor and a creative and innovation officer at Mullen. In the past, he's been a speechwriter, a reporter, and editor. Um, and uh, oh, he is the he is the. Uh, are you an inventor? Is it postcards from Alston? Is the you, you've developed that? Is that how is the best way of putting that, Edward? That's fine. Yeah, creator, <laughs> creator, I creator. innovator, inventor, uh, photographer, whatever. I, and, I personally call him the man of a thousand projects because he has so many things going on. Aaron Aaron Carey is with us as well, and she is a curator and an educator. She is a an artist and a very good one in her own right. Uh, many of you may know her from her time at uh, the New England School of Photography. She works as a preparator at the Addison Gallery here in Massachusetts, and she also works as uh, the graduate admissions at the MSFA at Tufts University as well. Aaron Carey, Edward Bochus, it is lovely to have you both here today on The Crit House. Great to be here. Thanks for having us. Tom Minty, thank you for joining us. Tom is British born and New Jersey based. And uh, Tom, tell us about your photography and uh, and what you're looking to learn here on the Crit House. Um, I am primarily drawn to shooting in black and white because I find color distracting and sometimes overstimulating. I like to shoot busy urban areas. I like to find people in moments of solitude and isolation. But then I also like to photograph places that you might uh, associate with busyness, but that are not. And uh, recently, I went to a two-day workshop at ICP in Manhattan. And during the um, initial review of some of our prior work, the facilitator uh, was drawn to one of the images that I'd taken at Asbury. And he urged me to keep going back there and photographing repeatedly over and over again, different perspectives, different times of day. And uh, I did that uh, a lot. And the result is what you're looking at today, some of the body of work that I've generated. I'm really looking for feedback around whether I'm repeating myself photographically, um, whether I'm missing anything, because I have this idea that this is now turning into some kind of project where I want to document the life of, say, Asbury Park and other shore towns in the off season, because they do have a different personality um, when the tourists are not there, and I find that very interesting. And so I'm also aware that the other thing I'm going to need to do is incorporate the human element into my work and some advice on how I might do that better. Absolutely. It's, uh, well, it's good to see the work. It's, it's certainly harder to do the human element during the off-season when there aren't any hum as many humans around. Um, <laughs> yes. Aaron, what's, uh, what's, your, what's your take on, uh, on what you're seeing and what, uh, your response to what he said? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so Tom, thanks for sharing your work. Um, the first time I, I went over your work, one of the things I really noticed, um, I think is that I would describe you as a photographer who's interested in place. So like you, you just revealed something I didn't know, right. Um, in the time that I was looking at it, but so when I really was going through, I was like, Oh, this is a photographer who loves a place who either is discovering it or knows it really well. And so I'm not sure I would always call it landscape, right? Even though you're working in the landscape, I'm not sure I would call all of the work landscape, but it seemed like you were, you're getting at or what you're seeking is to like reveal the essence of something. That was the thing I like, I thought that was what you were going for. Um, and so it's like, all right, he wants to reveal something about a place to me. Um, so I would describe the work right now as a place that is, not a place like images are full of like potential and I think some of the images are have a lot of intense mood so at times you use a little bit of cinema in the work in terms of the way that you're creating your compositions but it's more I think for me about quality of light or silhouetting at times like I see a cinematic eye or like here for example like just Jeff because Jeff, you're scrolling I'll just ask you to stop um sure so like you're on the corner and you set us up on one side. And so there's the potential of like what's being reflected in the window down the way, also possibly what's around the corner. Um, I think that's, I mean, I don't know if that's really what you're getting at. And to be honest, I'm not sure that's actually the work that this photograph does. Um, but I saw the potential of how you were sort of creating a composition that was creating anticipation or mood. And I think that I would describe a lot of the work in that way, where it's like, I was waiting for something to happen or arrive or occur. Um, so you're describing the place well, but like generally, 
Um, and your sure. hints and clues sometimes for us to discover. Um, one of the things that I think I would encourage you to think about is, you know, be careful not to leave too much to the viewer. That if like the subject matter is unclear, then like something is lost, right? By way of your intention. If I say like, oh, these images are well composed and they describe a space, but they're not full of subject yet. Um, I think that's probably like the, the the biggest and most important tidbit I had to give you it was like compositionally you're doing the right things you like light you know how light enters the space but now it's like all right don't don't literally tell me like back up and like let the subject enter the frame Edward yeah, yeah so a couple of things first of all first of all I your you, the way you framed I like how you framed what you're doing because you didn't claim that this is completely done and it's ready for prime time. You claim, you talked about what you're discovering and what you think this is and what what you where you want to take it. And and I thought you were really really clear with that. So so let me uh, mention a couple of the real positives and then a couple of things I think you can you can think about. So first of all, it's a great subject and um, and Asbury Park alone is a great subject, and as as well as this idea of these seaside towns, you know, off season. I've done a little bit of that, but not as thoroughly as you're starting to do it here. I think the other thing you've done is you've given it a wonderful feeling of dreariness. You can just sort of feel this <laughs> emptiness, this has been kind of sense of of the place. And I, I agree with everything that Aaron said, and that your sense of light and composition is good. I think you have some images where the subject just isn't all that interesting yet. Like, like even this one, for example, I think, you know, this brings to mind that famous Gary Winogrand photograph of the sailor on the boardwalk. And, and this exact same image, I think would have been actually better if they were farther back, you know, in the frame. And there was a little bit of mystery there. You weren't, you were telling me enough, back to Aaron's comment, like you're not asking me to do too much work, but you're not doing all of it for me. You're leaving a little bit of, of like, um, you know, mystery, mystery to it. But there, you have one image. I really want to talk about it for a bit. So if you scroll down to the one that's underneath the boardwalk, please. I also love the fact that you're incorporating these details, like the push sign, the little two circles. Okay. This image here to me is the story that you're that you're telling and and it, and it is wonderful so first of all you have used the frame very nicely all the way around in a circle all the way out to the edges you've taken me into the middle of that space underneath the boardwalk with a fence slats at the bottom yet at the same time you've taken me out of the frame with those slats over to the left there's a human presence underneath this boardwalk i can sense it i can see those footsteps i don't know who they are who, the, who they are they look like large footsteps but at the same time i also know wait a minute nature owns this place i can tell that from the ripples in the sand and then when i think that i'm done it's like wait a minute there's a solitary figure off in the background on the left and there's a couple off in the distance straight ahead and what is that person doing there by himself what is the couple doing there? Neither of them, in my opinion, were the people who are underneath that boardwalk and left those footprints. And in here, I find this entire story about a place, what it feels like, who goes there, what we can know and what we can't know. And you've captured all of that in a single image. And, and it's funny, I think that learning to look and dissect your own images more closely gives you a really insightful lesson for actually what to look for in subsequent images. Aaron, I have a feeling having taught some landscape and urban landscape is part of that. Do you have some thoughts about this one too? I do. Um, I agree with Edward. I think this is one of the stronger images that you presented. And I think part of that for me, being a person who lives on the North Shore of Massachusetts, who is very familiar with sea coast, the seacoast, um, I work in that area, different and yet the same. And so I think this idea of off season, right? And then also like, we all have things that are called to mind um, when you talk about seasonality or beach. And so what one of the things I really like about this is that it's not a typical view. You know, so like you showed me something different, a place I probably wouldn't have gone of my own accord. So like, I'm always looking for that in good photography. It's like, all right, what did the photographer look at? And why do they want me to consider it now? So then I'm looking for something, you know, it's not for me to see things I've already seen, but 
but like what happened here this is also a moment where instead of in in, in juxtaposition to some of your other images you had um you have single Im like images with a single strong subject matter that is a statement here is the sign here is a picture of the thing on the like in the foreground but if we go back to that underneath right as edward really like really spoken uh, articulately about there are so many different layers happening in here, right? So there's the, the weight and the shape and the volume of the thing overhead. There's nature underneath, there's time passing, there's the wind, there's quality of light. There's the absent human presence. There's the implication of humans further away. So here we can't really define exactly what's happening but you're bringing us to a place and saying, see, there are hints. So like there's this delight in the discovery process for the viewer in this moment um, so I think that's what brings us to a level of more the most successful or more successful than some of the other images that present us with something that is beautiful, like right? gorgeous signs lit up, funny time of day. But those that's a thing I might be expecting to see in a place in the off season, whereas like not this. So Tom, so, um, if I may, so I, I had the, the benefit and the joy earlier in my life of traveling extensively for weeks at a time with Joel Meyerowitz photographing in um, Ireland. I, I was uh, the advertising agency. He was the photographer, but uh, but I hired him. And but he he always talked about making an image, not taking a photograph or taking a picture. And we used to sit around and, and have these conversations about what that what that meant. And and I would say that under the boardwalk one is is an example of your you made that image. You didn't walk up with a camera and take it. Nobody else could have taken that or created that image because you saw it and you took us there and we can feel your presence as a photographer. I think there's a little bit of similarity and I have to ask you this with a with a figure sitting on the ledge. It's really hard for me to tell. Is that an actual person or is that is that a Yes, so, it, it is like so. Uh, th this particular area I, I, is one of the areas I, I photograph a lot of. Right, so I mean, I've got a lot of material from this end of the boardwalk. Right, and um, you'll find if it's rained, you always get these big reflecting puddles inside the covered area. Yeah, and uh, it had rained, so I went there after work, and lo and behold, this kid was sitting up on the. Uh, so I took a, a bunch of images because I was trying to capture him in the reflections. You know, he was very salt. Again, he was he was alone. Um, so I kind of, I thought it was just an interesting scene. I had, I know the number of times I've been there, I've never seen anyone climb up on the, the boarding right. and, and yeah. just sit so there. I love this image. And there's a couple of others that are reflective and, or that are structurally similar in the, in the geometry. I, I would have loved you to have worked that one, you know, even more so. I don't know if you were trying to stay, you know, uh, undetected or, you know, or what, but but there's, you have a, you clearly have a sense for, oh, there's an image here to be made. Um, and then your, your challenge or, or the, the trick, anybody's challenge, not, not yours is, okay, how do I not, not take the same picture that anybody else could have taken, right. but make this something that only Tom, Tom took you here and showed this to you. And you have that in a lot of, in a lot of your stuff, but, but this one, I love it as it is, but oh my gosh, I, I wish you had, you, there were more to look at here, you know? I'm going to piggyback if that's okay, because I think it's a good jumping off point. Please um, do. Yeah, so I think um, I agree with Edward, and I also have like a couple other numbers of pictures I want to call to in a second. But I think like this is a, a moment where I think sometimes when I look at how wide it is that you're shooting, I do think that um, the composition gets away from you a little in so much as you understand as a visually literate person what a good composition is. And so I think like you're letting the forms, the repetitious architectural elements, and the leading lines and understanding how focal length works, like be guiding principles sometimes where you need to actually sort of shut that off and run over that. Okay. Like, like, smart part of your brain. So like here, for example, and I think this is the thing maybe Edward is kind of like pointing a finger at is like the subject matter is the guy up above, right? And it's the relationship to like the opening and underneath that archway. And so really in terms of the square footage, right? If we describe this as square footage, really you have like, 20%, like 15% of the composition is really the subject. And it's also really deep in the focal, like into the plane. So it's really far away and it's hard for us to access. Um, what you did give us was this sort of beautiful puddle at the bottom that's, you know, like 
moving and, and it reflects what's happening above. So our brain, right, our, our really smart formal visual brains read the repetition and the symmetry. So it's like the thing I read the most when I stand back is the sort of like the darkness on the top recapitulated at the bottom and this left to right movement becomes these huge blur forms. That's the thing I see, but your subject is actually up here in the upper right hand right. corner. So it's like, this is a moment where like stay wide, but like step into the frame, move all around, like go into and make sure that the subject volume is where it needs to be to tell the story that you need to tell. Cause I think your idea of the subject is right, right? You're honing in on what you need to photograph, but then the rest of your architectural art smart brain is like, oh, but make it look beautiful this way. And it's like, nah, you can also check that in the window and like yeah. go out the window. Right. Well, what are the other images you said you wanted to talk about? Yeah, I also had so two images I thought were really, really great and they had potential and I would describe them as near misses. And for me and in my classroom environment, this is a hugely successful thing and it's a huge learning uh, opportunity. Uh, numbers 13 and 17. These were two that I felt like we started 13, like this has tons of potential. <laughs> This image right here has tons of potential. Um, so you've got some, an element in the foreground, you've got this thing in the background, right? So like the signage, the, the iconic, you know, disappearing older deco motel, um, we're lower. Part of what happens here is that like, I, the potential or like the subject matter is right there in the foreground, um, but nothing's happening with it. So the moment, the, the moment, the aha hasn't happened. And that could be the girl looking out the window at you or something to the other person, but also the quality of light also obscures what's happening in that foreground based on the color of the car too. So those th two things married together and they become a challenge to you. That's really hard to, to get over. So it's, I mean, like this has the potential. It's like almost a Mitch Epstein, but it's just not quite there yet. And it's like, all right, you're getting there. Um, but now you have to let the thing happen. So there's like a breathing room. And sometimes I really feel like your images are really composed and it's tight. And I'm like, oh no, but let something happen. Like muddy it up a little. Okay. So, so, so there's yeah. a, there's a, there's a, a video that I had seen that Sam Abel from National Geographic oh, had yeah. talked about that it, it's an image fairly similar to this. And he, it talks about how that image happened. I, I'll link to that at the end of the show. So you can click on over to see it. But um, he talks about, a, a very similar image and how he composed it and how he worked about. Uh, so we'll take a look at that um, with the, with the link later on. And you said the second image was what? Which one? Number seventeen. Seventeen. Yep. So this is another moment where it's like, okay, you're creating a landscape inside a landscape, right? So there's a foreground and a background. I love the repetition of the architecture. That like weird garbage shack, really. That's what that is with a sign that says <laughs> shop. So it's like, <laughs> creep is supposed to be delicious. It's really a garbage bin right and then you've got the repetition of those lines and shapes with the the big building in the back and then even the vertical slats of like right. that temporary space so there's this really nice you know they're recalling or calling to each other um the couple on the right is incidental but it's good to, i mean like, i think it's good to have something there but the the near miss is sort of like whatever's happening with that person in the foreground they haven't fully activated yet to become the subject so like right. they're there but nothing's happening yet but it's so close <laughs> yeah, I, I, I totally agree because I was looking at this and going, oh, would I like it better if there were no subject in the foreground at all, then it would only be about the oddity of the of the crepe shop. But but I, I want to say this because I can totally empathize with you, Tom. I have a tendency to, to take photographs that try to be, you know, your use of, geog of geometry is so good and you have such an understanding of how they relate to each other as elements. Before you came on, we were talking about another photographer, a, a professional, a, a teacher, a, a, a wonderful street photographer named Michael Hintley. And, and, and I studied with him and he, he, he used to tell me when he looked at work of mine that was a little too perfect, if you will. He would just say, loosen up, just, you just loosen up. You're, you, you just gotta, you know, and then, you know, I, I would say two things, you know, you, you obviously have looked at Gary Winogrand, but you know, Gary Winogrand so messes with horizon lines. Right. That alone can add some interest. The other photographer I really suggest you take a look at because I think you can see what happens when you go really even looser and less worried about stuff. But in a similar vein of what you're photographing is Trent Park. He's mm -hmm. a, uh, yep. Do you know him? He's and, and Yeah, I know some of his work, yeah. Yeah, Minutes to Midnight, for example, is would be like a, a variation of how you're how you're doing what you're doing and and i'm not it doesn't mean to give up your style at all because your style is sure. very very good and strong it just it just to remind yourself oh don't be confined by 
buy it sometimes, you know? One of the th one of the takeaways that I had from my time at ICP was really studying other photographers' work. So I kind of, I do spend a lot of time doing that. Um, and so, yeah, I mean, you know, I think that helps, you know, a lot when you can see how other photographers, um, right. you know, right. ma make a certain image. So yes, real quickly, one of the things that Tom Tom had asked at the very start was was about uh, including the human element in these uh, things during the off season. Uh, Edward, what's your what's your thought about how? Okay, so first he of might all, there was one that. where you had you were farther back. Are, are you comfortable approaching um, people and strangers? Uh, and, relatively, yeah. Yeah. Um, so, it's up. It's something I force myself to do. Yeah. Okay. Because I, I think that you, that becomes an important part here because. I can see these two guys, the guy sitting in the booth and the person leaning against the wall. They're both interesting characters. They're interesting characters by, 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 by definition, because look where they're hanging out in the middle of the off of the off season. And sometimes just striking up a conversation and then waiting for them to be a little bit disarmed, you know, and then you just, while they're talking, you lift your camera up to your eye or, you know, you take a few photographs and then as you're backing away, you, you take a few more and, I I think that um, I think that becomes the direct human element that that will um, that will be helpful. So this to me was the opposite of being under the, the the boardwalk. It's perfectly composed, nicely framed. You have something on the left that brings the foreground into play, but you're not you you didn't take me there. Uh, I don't feel your presence inside that image as the photographer who let me see something I couldn't see without, sure. without you. And so part of it is, I think if this is in film, this would be your master shot, right? Now you've got to go in and get all the detail and the action shot, you know, in the, the scene one, scene two, um, or, and, and I think that's, that's all, that's all it is. Um, so back to your thought that you, when you started with, you were saying, this is starting to feel like it could be a project. I think it's absolutely a project, but, you're, you're not even done yet with this location. Right, right. Every, everything, you've got a lot of stuff here that's good and that are keepers, but now you look at your work and you ask yourself, what don't I have? What don't I know? What have I not told my viewers yet? You, you, in the answers to those questions become what you go to look to photograph as you go back. Aaron Carey, the preparator extraordinary, what are you going to say to prepare Tom? For the next step um tom i want to encourage you one of the things i really noticed because you asked about photographing people and including the human element um and i think one of the things i really noticed is that it seems safe and comfortable like right now the way that you're composing humans they they're at a distance so there's a historical or, or like aesthetic distance in the work and you kind of remove them and make them far away and i don't know if that's because you want to keep the human element an idea Right, in a very Henry Cartier Bresson kind of way. And I, I sense that, and there's even some allusion to him in your work. And I want to, I mean, this may be one of the few exceptions, um, but I want to encourage you to get closer, right? Like okay. I, I, don't, I don't want people to be this like drifting off in the middle of nowhere. Like if you're going to tell me the story of the place then you also therefore need to tell me the story of the people of the place, right? So like, I don't need them to be little all the time or it seems like that's the safe place that where you currently are. So I think I would encourage you just to get closer. Um, if you were gonna look at, or if I could introduce you to another photographer who I think does that well, who describes place and also uses people and there's a push and pull of landscape and also portraiture, I would look at Mark Steinmetz. Really, I don't think there's a lot of other living American photographers doing it better than Mark. Um, you know, if you look at all of his series, uh, in LA um, or Atlanta, you know, like he has whole chapters or whole books that are years long project of, you know, Southeast Atlanta. And if he really introduces you to a way of life, a way of living, a way of thinking. Um, and to Edward's point, at some point as a documentary photographer, if you're describing place, there's what the place is giving you and then what you want from it. And as you work it, at some point you do have to back away and then say, well, what don't I have? You know, whose story, sure. whose story didn't I tell? Um, right. And so they're like, what happens here also? And if you just answer the question, what happens here? You're going to write a whole list of things because people do live there year round. You right. make it seem disparate or, or barren. And that's right. It, but that's an outsider's perspective. If you live there all the time, like, for example, I live very close to Hampton Beach. So like 
in Massachusetts area, that's it's an equivalent to where you're going. Um, and as somebody who continues to frequent that place, it's still vibrant and alive and people still have to buy their groceries and people still get their laundry done. And like, and so I think there's a lot more there in terms of like potential for you. Good conversation. Um, uh, Tom, thank you for coming on the Crit House. It's, uh, uh, we're, we're honored that you have shown us your images and we're looking forward to seeing what, uh, what comes of it. I will say the suggestion of trying to uh, engage people in, uh, is, is a challenge that I have. I've been working on a project on Mass Ave in Massachusetts uh, for a long time and I have trouble overcoming that, that hump. So I'm still fighting through that. So good luck in, in, uh, in trying to accomplish that. It's a, it's a hard one. I will say that I am going to be linking to that uh, video I talked about uh, with Sam Abel here at the end. So take a look at that. Sam is, uh, is, uh, is a, a legend and an icon and, and, and talks great about how to create images and, uh, and Tom, it might be helpful for you to take a look at that as well. Um, Thank you, Aaron. Thank you, Edward. Thank you, Tom. And if you are interested in showing your work on The Crit House, please go to our website at thecrithouse.com. Thanks for watching The Crit House.